Hey guys! <laughs> Welcome to Unwomenly, where taboo topics are never off the table. I like to bring guests on and have discussions with an open mind and dirty mouth, of course. It's always encouraged. Fuck I, yeah. I know. I'm Jen Danzak, for those that don't know, and I'm recording in Los Angeles with my friend Chandler Moore. What up, what up, what up? We're going to talk sports, spurts, you know, a lot of very manly topics. <laughs> <laughs> So I would say it is time to let our hair down and the foul words fly. All right. Hair is down. Hold on, hold on. And down. Got it. Hair is down. Hair is down. Let's You're do doing great. You great. look great with this long hair. Well, thank you. You really do. That's quarantine. That's all quarantine. Yeah. Did you see the beard? Dude. It was long. Why did you trim it? Why did I trim it? Was it getting too hot? Um, I don't like not knowing where my chin is. Oh, okay. I that's, understand That's that. not really it. It just looked horrible. And with the mask. Don't remind Ooh. me. It would fold under. It would look curly on the bottom. No it way. It was rough. It was rough. That does not sound like a good time. Yeah, it wasn't. Glad I'm not a dude. I'm... <laughs> but I'm very unwomanly. I yeah. was just about to say. <laughs> 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 but I do want to. I do want to thank you for allowing me to have you on this because this is always fun to have people I know. Well, thanks for traveling oh, yeah. and letting oh, me host a, a whopping bit. ten miles. Whoa. But yeah. Hey, people don't measure things in miles here. They measure in minutes. That is true. So 10 miles is... I know. That's that's like true love right there. It, 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 <laughs> I'm glad you feel it too. <laughs> and I'm so glad we made eye contact for that. I know. Because it was so necessary. I know. Can you feel it? Oh, I can fucking feel it. Let's and do it. I found a parking spot. Like, this is going to work. There you fucking go. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Clink it. Dink he's, it. He's got his Guinness and I've got... Oh, shit. And sink it. I forgot to clink it. Sink it. <laughs> Always. He's got his Guinness. I've got my fucking uh, Tito's and I guess Kool-Aid. I forget Kool-Aid. Yeah, I think it was Kool-Aid. But you're an actor. Yep. And we met while serving tables just like everyone else in this fucking podcast. How <laughs> else is that supposed to go? I know. You're so he's an actor be, and uh, we're table. both from the Midwest and right. we both, uh, oh yeah, serve tables. Yeah, you know, because you got to make a living and serve people ranch for the rest of their fucking lives. I, you hate. I hate ranch. You hate on it. I hate it. But so much. I mean, Chipotle Ranch is bomb. It's the milk of the gods. Ew. I've never heard that. I know what I said. <laughs> <laughs> but. But. You're also a very talented artist. I've seen your well, fucking you. TikToks. Thank you. I've seen that shit. Appreciate it. I cannot draw no, worth shit. <laughs> that, at all. See, people always, I, I was telling you earlier, people say that, but then the only response to that is just do it. And I promise you over time, you'll see progress. But the thing is, nobody wants to make that first step. Yeah. Like I did it when I was, I mean, fucking eight. I mean, I was just drawing and listening to the cats in the background. <laughs> like I, that was real. Actually, that's, that was, I believe a, it. we had a VHS of cats and it scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> but those nightmares really gave me good ideas for drawings. So, uh, did you see the newest cats with Taylor? I refuse. I love really? that you say with Taylor. It was I with know. so many people. Dame Taylor Judy is Dents, the one Dench, that matters. <laughs> And apparently it was awful. I haven't seen it. But I haven't I mean, even seen the original. Watch the trailer. You don't need to see the movie. <laughs> Seriously. I, really? I, yeah. Off, I was watching in the break room of Yard House, actually. Really? Yep. I was watching the trailer and I immediately, in front of like nine people, I'm the resident musical theater kid mm -hmm. that, you know, everybody turned around after it was done. And what do you think? I'm, I'm not seeing that. I'm really? not doing it. No, I, I did not want to. Why would I? I the whole uh, spectacle of cats is that it was on stage and people were acting like cats. It, it, the CGI of it was, it, it takes the entire charm away. Mm -hmm. So the entire spectacle is the fact that it is on stage. It makes all the difference in the world. Fuck, you really thought about this. You really like cats. <laughs> Or don't like it, I guess. I'm a, I don't know how to take that, but um, <laughs> I actually I don't I don't really particularly like the show. Um, oh. But it's Andrew Lloyd Webber, and it's you know the entrance. It's like Phantom of the Opera. If you don't know Phantom of the Opera, are you really like able to say anything theater related? It's the same thing with Cats. I would say that I have no authority because I haven't even seen Phantom of the Opera. I know See? I'm gonna get kicked out of this place See? in about three minutes. Nah, <laughs> this is a film town. If, we, if we were in New York, that is true. That is true. About it, but but you're also like a really good fucking singer too, which is wonderful because um, I remember like harmonizing with you and shit randomly. Oh yeah, I was actually I was about to ask how the fuck do you know that? 
Like, that I, that you were a good ever, singer? Yeah. We would always be singing randomly around work. That's when, true. Whenever there would actually be a good song on, which is very seldom. But... <laughs> I want to refrain. Ah, I know. Pardon the fun. I know. Refrain. refrain. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's going to be a long night. You grew up outside of Wichita, which is literally like the only thing I know of Wichita is like that fucking Seven Nation Army song. I'm okay. I'm so glad good. that's the reference you so make. So good. Though. I'm glad that's the reference you make because I hear outlandish Wizard of Oz references that I'm really tired of hearing. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, I mean, <laughs> there's other movies that are in can- Looper. Right. Looper. Never Remember, seen it. What? Know what the the Ryan Johnson, Bruce Willis, and Joseph Gordon Levitt movie? Who the fuck is Ryan Johnson? He directed and wrote it. Oh. He uh, also wrote and directed uh, Star Wars me. 7. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Yours, see, I can't I can't just pull it out of anywhere. It just comes. If I do it too many times, I. I'm sure you might throw up, huh? You said it. <laughs> not, not me. <laughs> so if it happens. I semi warned you. All right, that's where that's fine. You I mean, warned yourself. You have, you have the pop filter. Those are way cheaper to replace than the mic. So you're golden. I'm still gonna scoot back. <laughs> <laughs> It'll get on your nice it's Cowboys me. jersey I, instead. Yeah, yeah, I love this jersey, but uh, <laughs> you know, adds character. Yeah, that's true. But I do only know like that, like boom, 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 boom. Like I only know like that, but like <laughs> it's so fucking good. <laughs> but you gotta tell me what fucking like Kansas was like though, dude. Kansas is why pro football? Why are you obsessed with pro football when you live in fucking Kansas? Well, okay, pro sports are non-existent in Kansas for real. We we have minor league baseball. We have you know I think we have a club soccer team now. We had an arena football team for a while, which is wild. Oh, it's called the wild. Oh. Um, <laughs> What's funny is that wasn't planned. Nice. Um, nice. It, uh, but we didn't have pro sports. I mean, everything was up by Kansas City. You mm-hmm. know, Royals, mm-hmm. Chiefs, you know, that kind of stuff. The, the interest for me of sports in general was always there. How far is Kansas City from Wichita? As they would say here, three and a half hours. Quite a hike. Yeah. Not really, to be honest, because, I mean, we're I in the Midwest. I would not drive that to go to a fucking okay. game. I drove here when I moved here. Um, Me too. And I know that it, <laughs> there's there are memes about it. There are all kinds of stuff about Midwestern people, and it's like, why would I fly? It's only like a 13-hour drive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, that's how it is. I mean, it's really, it's not that bad. In fact, I made the drive to Dallas a bunch. Oh. You said my Cowboys jersey. Mm-hmm. I mean, I made that drive several times, because it's only five hours. But there wasn't a whole lot of pro sport interest. Oh. Okay. From, I mean, from the teams. Like, yeah. Nobody wanted to move to that market. It wasn't a big enough town. The thing okay. is, the size of the town in the land area is about the size of San Francisco. Oh, really? But only 300,000 people? 300 to 350,000 people. I okay. say only, but for Kansas, nobody pictures 350,000 people. Right. But um, that's your closest main city. Your yep. actual town, what, Derby? How many nice. people are in that, population-wise? A third of it, I would say. It's growing, actually. Really? Yeah. Mine was only, my hometown's like 26,000. Oof. Tiny. Gotcha. I know, right? Lots of cows. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you play any sports growing up? Did you play football a, growing up? I played a ton of sports. Um, I drifted through, I think soccer was the first one. Of mm. course, everybody plays soccer. Mm. Um, but then I went through, I did play basketball. So boring. I did soccer. Soccer's so boring. To watch or to play? Yeah, I mean, I give them fucking props for playing yeah. it. There's that endu- no way. That endurance that, Oh, crazy. it's insane. But yeah, even watching is like, okay, I'm... What's funny is it's the most watched sport in the world. I believe that. And we think it's boring here. I know. There's so much we're, cooler shit to watch. We're spoiled. Um, <laughs> but I did, let's see, soccer, basketball, track, I have it written down. Soccer, basketball, <laughs> track, uh, and football. And then on the side, like I was pretty good at bowling. I just never did it on a team or anything. Um... And then I actually, for a while, did professionally play darts. No way. Dead serious. No way. I would hustle the fuck out of some 50-year-olds. <laughs> I was like 12. I was just going to ask. I was like 12, and I was playing in a youth league, which, I mean, there's not a whole lot of interest in that either. Yeah. But, you know, my dad ended up being like the president of the Wichita Darting Association. That is so funny. And, you know, there was a little bit of traction with it, and I got in there and would hustle some, some 40-year-olds ever so often and win some what's called a blind draw, oh like where you God. draw a partner and you play a tournament together mm-hmm. and would win some good money off that. Oh my God. Dude, yeah. you know what kind of weird sport I'm kind of good at? What? Fucking pool. Yeah? You want to know how I learned? I do. Playing Grand Theft Auto 3. <laughs> <laughs> you know how you can go into the bars? And yeah. Just, <laughs> that's how I learned. That's not, that's not relevant though. <laughs> 
that's not you can't apply that just i, I guess you, you can get seems, angles and kind of the the mechanics so I now guess. like i mean last year when i was in my best friend's wedding like mm. i played pool against like all the other bitches like all the groomsmen and i was fucking annihilating them <laughs> <laughs> i won't lie i'm pretty good there you go yep. darts that's nuts i didn't even really think of that being like an actual sport uh steel tip uh make sure that we put on record that soft tip darts are for absolute pussies oh okay that makes sense yep. yeah yeah soft tip all you have to do is hit it you don't yeah. actually have to make it stick for it to count because it's electric boards mostly oh that's so annoying right yeah, it doesn't that's have not the same fair. feel no not at all how yeah. come you don't have a dartboard in here i usually do in most of my places but i just i don't, I don't know i, I yeah. haven't gotten around to it i guess that's fucking badass i did not know that about you out of all those sports that i named though mm -hmm. there's one that i didn't play and it's weird that i didn't play it for an arts kid for an artsy person mm -hmm. it's i'm i'm weirdly coordinated i never really put it to much use but i'm weirdly coordinated okay. and i actually have a family tie to professional baseball nice and it's the one sport i didn't play baseball baseball really yeah it's super weird you want to know the family tie is? yeah okay so Justin Verlander. I'm just kidding. Cooler. I don't know. Cooler. The one that I'm related to is by far cooler. Oh. Mm-hmm. Babe so, Ruth. Yes. No way. Yes. I'm no no. Dead serious. It's not Babe Ruth. Get it the is, fuck out it of is, here. Yes. George Herman Ruth. Yes. The same lot. Oh great Brian Marino. <laughs> <laughs> what? No way. Yeah. No way. So my grandfather's mother was her maiden name was Ruth. And in a weird way, her, he only had two kids, I believe, from two different women, and one was adopted, I think. Um, so he doesn't have any direct descendants by that name. Okay. Um, but somewhere along the line, it's like a second cousin kind of thing. Mm. I am a direct relative. I'm not a direct descendant, but I'm a direct relative to George Herman Ruth. That is not bullshit. That is absolutely true. You should put that on your dating profile. That's fucking Why? dope. I don't know. That's just so yes. cool. That's, that's a sweet that's little fact. That's very womanly. <laughs> Clearly. That'll get you all the chips. Says Jen Danzag. Say, <laughs> you should put that you're related to Babe Ruth on your dating profile. That's fucking dope. That, it is. Like, how yeah, but. That's so cool. How many people are going to go, oh my God. That I is have true. to. That no, is true. That's not going to happen. That is true. That's fucking dope, dude. That's also where I get the Irish Catholic from. That's uh, okay. definitely where I get the, well, the drinking. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm enjoying a fucking, Guinness. I know. I know. As we your, speak. You and your fucking it's Guinness. It's just the thing. So gnarly. But my love for sports, if you mm -hmm. want to know. Of course. I grew up playing like softball. Okay. So that's crazy that you never played baseball. Do you enjoy watching it at least? More or less. It's it's getting to be the most boring sport. Well, because it, it's trashed. Not trash. Well, because of the trashed. fucking Astros. Oh, well, they can because of suck that. And my then also dick. the, the commentary is not exciting anymore. Because mm, of the, yeah, COVID. And only it's once in a blue moon that you get something that's actually noteworthy really um it, especially in the social media presence you know the short attention spans nba is ruling social media and then nfl is catching up because they're still the most watched sport here nfl is mm -hmm. i hate nba i hate base really? basketball oh basketball so, it, basketball <laughs> it's so boring to me like okay wake me up in the fucking fourth quarter like it's so boring yeah like it's just back that. and fucking forth like knock it off there are, there are <laughs> What, what I call endurance sports and strategy sports. Perfect. Basketball is an endurance sport. Soccer is an endurance sport. Golf's total strategy. Yep. Yeah. Football is strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, base, baseball is a weird neither category sport. You don't think it's like a both? I mean, yes and no. Because... Yes, there's endurance involved, but that's really only for short sprints. It's true. Yeah. And then there's not much strategy. It's more skill. You know, okay, how yeah. many times can you do something consistently over and over and over? Yeah. Then... Okay, how can we beat the other team strategically? Yeah. You know, it, within a millimeter of space can change an entire play. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, so yeah. It's kind of, it's yes, sense. yes, and no to endurance versus strategy, I think. Huh. That might be just me, but. I feel like tennis is definitely both. I'm obsessed with tennis. Yes. I never really thought about that, I guess. It's a weird classification, but it's why I said I'm into football more than anything, mm -hmm. because every play is. Like every individual play is essentially an entire chess match. You have 11 moving pieces on both sides of the board, but they move simultaneously. I've never played chess. What? I know. Well, then that doesn't help your listeners. No. Get that analogy. I know. I know. I'm just kidding. I take it back. They might get it. They might get it. They'll probably get it. I know. They, they probably know more than I do. <laughs> um, I have not played uh, chess. Checkers, but not chess. Well, take that basic premise. You know, okay. you have to move pieces and essentially you have X amount of pieces that can do different things within different guidelines. But in football, they're moving all at the same time. So essentially, every single down, every single play is an entire chess 
or checkers game. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's kind of the way I think of it. And a lot of strategy goes into it. You yeah. Know, you have to know your opponent. Um, yeah. Maybe not so much for checkers, but for chess, <laughs> you definitely have to know, you know, if you've played them before, mm -hmm. what they can do, what they're able to do and what they will do mm -hmm. are very different than what actually ends up happening. So mm -hmm. you have to know them before they know what they're going to do. Would you consider like card games like a sport? I mean, what kind of card games? Like, like poker? Yeah. Or like yeah. any of those. Sport? I oh, know. It's, I know. It's rough. Because I'm, I'm on the weird, like marbles is considered a sport. It has physical ability. Hmm. But uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to hate on it because yeah. I think, I mean, cheerleading is a sport. You know, yeah. I think all of those things are a sport. Card games. I yeah. think someone could die of inactivity from poker and therefore to me, it's not a sport. Yeah, so I mentioned softball that I played. I, mm -hmm. I would always go to, like, baseball games, like, in, obviously, Cleveland Indians. I would always go up to Michigan yep. and, like, watch the Detroit Tigers. There you go. You know, going up to Michigan a lot, there's obviously a lot of, like, ice sports and hockey and shit. And I yep. love hockey. Obviously, I fell in love with, like, figure skating, and I loved doing that. I've seen so, your video. So much where fun. Where you're, you're the, the newswoman. <laughs> <laughs> Where they say, hey, Jen, how, how's the weather over there? And you're like, hold on, let me do another one. <laughs> Whee! I don't know why I showed you that. Why did I you do that? You sent me the link. Too. I was drunk. Why did I do that? Because you were drunk. <laughs> but I mean, like I was always in competitions. That was so much fun. I kicked ass. I won't lie. Obviously. I, I believe you. You either go big or you fucking go home. You know what I mean? Completely. And I obviously am there to fucking kick ass. There so I'm a very competitive bitch, obviously. <laughs> And, um, and like there was, I kept getting like first place and second place, first place, first place. And I finally got like a fourth place and I'm like, fuck this and I quit. Oh my God. <laughs> Holy shit. And it got a little expensive. So, I mean, it's, it's really whatever. Expensive. My parents, my parents were like, okay with that. Was it traveling? It, it was, was it... it was mm, not so much traveling, but it was more like you had to pay for the ice time. You had to pay for the oh. membership. You had to pay the coach. Gotcha. You know? Yeah. So it was a lot. And of course equipment too, mm -hmm. but it was so much fun. I, that's probably my first love besides like softball. Like even while playing a bunch of soft, I played softball for like what, 13 years or some shit. Yep. Yeah. I was yep, 13 years. How do you know? I don't know. <laughs> I saw it in your face. Oh, okay. I don't know. Something fucking I just, long. You, it looked like you were asking me. So I felt you, pressure you to, knew. Yeah. to make you just know. I'm proud. Yeah. Yeah. You should be. 13 <laughs> years is a really it good. It is a long time. It is a long time. And it was like, I could feel myself like growing out of love with it. And so like, Cause Ouch. I, you know, cause I I've was like, there. I was on junior varsity, I was on varsity and then I kind of replaced that with tennis and mm -hmm. that'll forever be probably my everlasting love. I love tennis and I'm badass at it. I won't lie. Mm -hmm. I must know you are from Kansas, yes. but you're a fucking Cowboys fan. Yeah. So, but I have a good explanation. Yes. Please enlighten me. Okay. So this is actually, this is the same way I feel about, uh, Catholics. <laughs> so I went to Catholic school from kindergarten through 12th grade. Like, all of my schooling was done in Catholic school. Ooh, and the okay. thing that bugs the fuck out of me is when people say, uh, they don't really try to defend anything that they believe. They just go, well, you know, it's just belief. It's just faith. Yeah. And, you know, that's great. That's good for them. If that is what makes them happy, then fine. I'm not going to argue with that. But then when they get asked questions and they can't defend anything of why they believe something, it bugs the hell out of me. <laughs> So I have a good explanation of why I'm a Cowboys fan as opposed to some Cowboys fans who are like, yeah, but they're America's team. Yeah. And they don't explain anything. Yeah. It makes absolutely no sense. I have a good explanation. Okay. So at least there's that. Yeah. Um, Kansas, it doesn't have a huge sports, well, pro sports presence, as I mentioned. The closest to us were like the Royals in Kansas mm -hmm. City and mm -hmm. the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. And most of my friends, you know, growing up were... Chiefs fans just because they're the closest team. But the thing is, that's Missouri. Oh. And so them being in Missouri, it was a weird rivalry. I know people that kind of felt the same way I did where it's like, well, nope, that's not us. That's Missouri. <laughs> that doesn't okay. count. Yeah. And so for a good long while, it was just kind of that personal bias against that. And Henry Cavill actually, you know, Superman is from Kansas. That's so weird. And so actually he was on Rich Eisen doing a sports talk show and Rich Eisen asked him, so you play Superman and you developed an NFL fanship from this? And he goes, yeah, well, I mean, most of people from Kansas and he's a Brit, so it's funny to hear it coming from his mouth. Oh. Um, he's talking about it and he goes, you know, it just makes most sense because most people from Kansas are Chiefs fans. So I decided to be a Chiefs fan since I was playing, you know, Superman, you know, I have to kind of envelop myself in that character. So here's my thing, though. 
in the 60s, when they were building the team, they actually, they were established, Cowboys were established in 1960. And back then, you know, football wasn't nationally televised. In fact, it was still on the come up because pro football was kind of looked down upon as a, as a national presence for a good long while. Uh, college football was big, but then people would go, oh, you're going to go pro? And they would just laugh because it was such a joke. Wow. Um, so it was still kind of on the come up. And by the time it was gaining popularity, then they started expanding the league. And there's actually, there's a good story about, at the time, the Redskins were not a fan of letting more expansion teams into the league. So back then, they actually wanted to play, you know, some songs that were like Hail to the Redskins. Mm. They wanted to play that at their stadium. And Tex Schramm, the owner of the Cowboys at the time, he bought the rights to Hail to the Redskins and wouldn't let them play it in the stadium unless they voted to let a new expansion team into the league. <laughs> That's brilliant. So there's instant bad blood between the Cowboys and then the Redskins. Because <clears throat> baby, of course, now we got bad blood. See? And so, of course, they're the football team now and nicknamed mm-hmm. pending. But mm-hmm. um, it was a really cool way to come into the league. And that was 35 years before I was born. But what they did well was marketing. You know, think about the cheerleaders. Think about the, the just the name America's team. That came from them being the first nationally televised team. So when they started being on TV every week, all the areas without teams, like Wichita, Kansas, mm-hmm. for instance, where my dad grew up. Mm-hmm. they started watching the Cowboys. Interesting. And so that's why we have such a huge national presence. Like, go to any stadium, any away game that we have. Right. And it's still a ton of Cowboys fans. Literally, that's all I know about Cowboys fans, is there's a dick ton of them. A dick ton. A dick ton. A fucking dick ton. It's either Cowboys or Eagles. That's like <laughs> every... Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Um, see, the, I mean, Steelers have a huge presence because they've just won for so long. I mean, they And of won... course, Patriots, yeah. Too. Yeah. Well, yeah. now. Mm. Fucking bandwagon fans. Oh, I know. There's too many fucking bandwagon fans yeah. everywhere with every fucking team. And it's always going to happen is the thing. That's not going to change. I yeah. mean, there are a ton of Chiefs fans coming out of the woodwork right now because they're awesome. Right. And Pat, Pat Mahomes has a large chance to be the greatest of all time. Did you time, know that Pat Mahomes me? is like pissed off when people say Pat Mahomes? I think I Patrick. told you that. No, I fucking, no, I told you that. No. I totally no, told I was watching, somebody that. It was Monday Night I, I know, and the mom called it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, at least we talked about it or <laughs> well, something. Either that or we were both watching it. So yeah, I don't that. know. But That's probably it. Yeah. To be honest. Because <laughs> like, we have nothing else to do on Mondays <laughs> this year. Um, so true. Yeah. So that was the thing was my dad started growing up uh, watching Cowboys because they were, I mean, they were the attractive team to watch, but all, also they were always on. Wow. So they were the only nationally televised team. And so that was really the only team that people had a chance to watch a lot of times. Um, and actually one of the things with that is Tech Shram, as well as promoting his own team, he was also really good for the league, kind of like Jerry Jones is now. Jerry Jones is actually kind of the detriment of our team, but he's good for the league because he improves the watchability of it. Oh. Tech Shram in the 60s and 70s, that's actually why we wear white at home, is so that everyone on TV could see the away team's colors, and so they could start getting into the league more, not just the Cowboys. Isn't that just so nice? They're it just, is. They're so thoughtful. Seriously, though. <laughs> I mean, you, it sounds like you're being sarcastic, but it honestly, it, it was really, it was improving the entire market. Yeah. And so then that we started getting more teams into the league, and that's why we have such high TV ratings. That's why the Super Bowl is the most watched thing every single year on yeah. television. Did you know that the most recent Brown Steelers game was the most watched game since the Super Bowl? I believe last it. Year? Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. Fucking brilliant. My yeah. my good old Browns. You want to hear about my Browns? Of course. Obviously, since I'm from fucking Cleveland. Yeah. And and they got a good game coming up this they've week. They've got a good game. A good ass game. By the time that this is out, we're gonna know more of their fate. And I am terrified right now. <laughs> <laughs> I am so terrified. It's gonna be a good game. It's though. gonna be a. I'm praying it's not a blowout, and it it keeps close. And, yeah. But then again, what if we're the one that blows them out, and I'm gonna be like. Damn it, Jen. <laughs> you know? You're going to feel dumb. I'm going to feel like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, I really, I know I already told you this before, but like, I didn't really pay attention to football until like maybe like three years ago. Um, yeah, you did say Baker, that. Baker's first season. Yeah. yeah. Was when I really was like, oh, this is fun. And I went to like a Browns bar. Oh, I mm-hmm. still do. It's called St. Felix and it's in Here Hollywood. In yep. yep. And they play OSU games. 
Ohio State, not Oklahoma or oh. whatever. Oh. Um, every single Saturday, <laughs> I know. I didn't, there's too many, you know, OSU, KSU, yep. whatever, you know. Because yep. we have Kent State University. That's Oh, well, that's KSU. Yeah, exactly. That's K-State. You're right. Kent State can fuck right off. <laughs> there can only be one. <laughs> but, no, because we were just talking about OSU and there's two of them. And they're two actually yeah. decent ones. Oklahoma State is a good one to have, too. Oh, yeah, they are pretty good. The Cowboys, yeah. by the way. Oh, that's right. Jesus Christ. Des Bryant too many, went there. Too many cowboys. Oh, really? Des Bryant went from being a cowboy in college to a cowboy in NFL. That's kind of dope. Yep. Doesn't have to change any uh, verbiage. It's true. He'll be like, unless you know, when you're like dating someone, you accidentally call them by your ex's name. He doesn't I've have to do that. that. Have you really? Yeah, I dated an Abby, and then right after her, I dated an Allie. Oh no! <laughs> so uh, actually, at one point, I, I hope they don't listen to this. But uh, <laughs> at one point, I actually did. I pulled an Abley. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I, halfway through the word. That's funny. Oh. Did she notice? No, I don't think so. Oh, good. Well, she won't listen. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was, yeah, Baker's first season. And yep. now I've like really become like a fucking true ass fucking fan. Like, yep. and I deserve it. Like, I haven't been to. Of course you I'm do. I'm from there. Browns fans deserve right. it. Right. They deserve to have their team be good. Ugh. <sighs> It's been so once. long. Yep. Yeah. I mean, Johnny Manziel fucked it all up for us. We almost got him. Jer- really? Steven, uh, Jerry Jones' son, actually took the phone out of his hands on draft day and hung it up saying, no, stick to our plan, draft an offensive lineman like we said we were going to. Do not draft Johnny Manziel. I, like, got chills just now from that. Yep. Really? Yep. Wow. It's a real thing. Well, I mean, he fucked up in Canadian Football League, too, so. Yep. <laughs> his first game, I think he threw four picks. Jesus. First, first game in CFL. Jesus. Yep. I mean, I get it. We all go through our party phase. So yeah. I guess I shouldn't really dog on them too much. Right. But, but like, bro. DUIs. Bro. Alcoholism. Bro. Proper. I mean, not showing up to practice and shit. Jesus. Like, yeah. If you're a drama queen, don't don't waste our time. Okay. You know? Fucking Steelers. Fucking. Oh, yeah. they can... Juju. Oh, he's a piece of shit. Yep. You can go stomp on a logo somewhere else, bro, while you're at home watching the fucking Super Bowl and watching the playoffs happen. I, I don't I don't even want to support that. <laughs> right. Don't, don't go do it somewhere else. Right. That just makes you look horrible. Yeah. No, yeah, for I'm sure. I'm so fucking glad they lost to the Bengals after that. Oh, my God. It was so nice. But also, he's not the only one that does that kind of shit. Even, like, OBJ on our team was pretty cocky last yep. season. And you guys are playing better now that he's not on the team. Uh, well... Hurt, I guess. But well, not still, on the, but on I know the, what you mean. On the lineup. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Say. Yeah, that is interesting. Yep. That is. There's a lot of power players that mm-hmm. want the ball, you know, and it's hard to really. Chubb wants it. Hunt wants it. Landry wants it. Okay, yep. which way are we doing it? Yep. And Baker's actually kind of opening up, and when he finds a way to go through without anybody fucking blocking him, he actually runs the ball now. Yep. So it's like, okay, bro. Yep. You you get that fuck. You you slide, that, bro. That protection down. You slide. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> What'd you say? O line protection? And I was like, it's defense. <laughs> you said he's got the defense around him, you know, to, to run the ball. And I'm like, I know what you're talking about. And you said, shut the fuck up. And I was like, okay, well now that you say that, it's it's O line protection, not defense. <laughs> Whatever. He was still being defended, so it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Joe. <Jeff. laughs> But I've never actually been to a Browns game, and that kind of hurts me See, a little bit. But now it'll be more attractive. Oh yeah, of Next course. Next time you go home and and you know you have a chance to, yeah, you'll jump at it more. And hopefully there'll actually be more fans last time this coming time because I guess it was only like <sighs> three thousand that were allowed in for this past well, at season. At least there were some. I know that is true. A lot of places didn't have any. We let like twenty five thousand in. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Texas. Damn, that's a lot. Yeah, a yeah, Texas doesn't give a they shit. Give a Florida and Texas don't give yep. any we shit. We had more than Florida, though. <laughs> like, really? We had more than Tampa Bay, I think, was the one to let most fans in in Florida. It might have been, oh. I don't think it was Miami, but I think it was Tampa Bay. Wow. They let quite a Tampa few fans Bay. In. Tampa According Bay. According to that fucker on, what is yep. it, Sports Center? I don't even know which. Uh, Skip Bayless. On, yes, him. It, it was on ESPN for a while, but he's on Fox now. Oh, uh, okay. Because he had that thing with Stephen A. He's another one. Mm-hmm. He's another character. He never fucking emailed me back when I emailed him once. Remember, I was actually I was telling you I went to the Cowboys Rams game here in LA uh, for the playoffs, and they put him up on the the jumbotron, Stephen A. And when I said earlier that when they when we travel well, it's mostly Cowboys fans. Oh yeah. He, even here in LA in the playoffs. It was 70% Cowboys. That's crazy. And so they put Stephen A. up on the Jumbotron, and I've never heard more, fuck 
fuck you and <laughs> flipping everybody off like it was crazy oh wow uh, lebron was there wow uh, post malone was there of course posty was there oh yeah huge cowboys huge fan. cowboys fan giant cowboys fan um they had a bunch of rams hall of famers in the boxes and stuff which was cool and then, like, YG did the halftime show. Oh, and stuff. okay. It was cool. It was a really, nice. really cool experience. But it was mostly Cowboys fans, too. Wow. So it was Damn. intense. You guys rolled deep. That's kind of <laughs> oh, yeah. crazy. Absolutely. But you watched a lot of baseball, though. I, know I that. love baseball. Yeah. We talked about it before, but yeah. fuck the Astros, though. <laughs> <laughs> It just fucks up the whole watchability. Oh, for sure. It, it, the credibility. It fucks up the whole Everything. game, not yeah. just the team. Mm-hmm. So then, I mean, baseball's on the down the downfall anyway with social media because the NBA rules social media. They just do. Ooh, really? You think yeah. so? Oh, yeah. If you oh. look at the presence of the league and the teams themselves and their social media presence, they're so much better at it than every other league. The NFL's catching up. They're getting better at it. Okay. Um, but... <clears throat> the advantage that the NFL has, uh, no ice. Sorry, <laughs> is is that I mean they're still the most watched sport. No. So even without the social media presence, they're still going to be watched. Mm-hmm. But the NBA is catching up. Damn. Yeah, in revenue and stuff. Would you say NBA or NFL have more money to spend on like players and on would, players or like even just in general, like have more money in the fucking league? Mm, the contracts are different. I think the NFL has more money because. First off, more players. They have to have more money because there are more players to a team. Mm. Um, and then also staffs are bigger and travel expenses, you know, take all that into account. I think the NFL definitely still has a bigger budget. Um, oh, okay. But the NBA has set a precedent of having fully guaranteed contracts mm. um, way more often than the NFL does. So their money sometimes is better for the players. They prefer it for sure. Okay. Um, but the NFL still has that money interesting it'll change because of covid right like the salary cap is going to go back down again just even oh. a little bit but jesus it's gonna change yeah interesting do you have any like absolute favorite players of all time or are they just like in the nfl yeah i gotta um, know players of all time actually this is awesome yes i'm gonna start out with my favorites and then work in there's a really really cool story about that and i gotta know your least favorites too oh, let's do that of shit. course um <laughs> I'll go best, least, and then a cool story. Okay. Um, of course, I love all the Cowboys greats. Uh, you know, Troy Aikman, Emmitt Smith, Michael Irvin, the triplets who won three Super Bowls in four years for us in the 90s. Um, wow. Yeah. The, I mean, you can't get away from those three. Like, wow. They're the triplets. Um, so if you're a Cowboys <laughs> fan and you don't know who the fuck those people are, yeah. Cowboys fans will get, I mean, get the fuck out of my house. Yeah, I've never heard of them, so sorry, oh. guys. Hall of Famers, all three of them. Wow. But my favorite definitely is Roger the Dodger, Roger Staubach in the 70s. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Please tell me he had a porn <clears throat> stash. Please. He did not. Ugh. He had big old sideburns because it was Ooh. the 70s. But um, no, he actually, he was the the anti-Joe Namath. So Joe Namath, Broadway Joe, was, you know, kind of the, the womanizer. He was doing all the fun commercials. He was the one going out and partying. He, mm. Roger Staubach was a military man. And so he actually, he got drafted, I believe, by the Cowboys and then went off and did his tour in the Navy. Wow. In, what was that? That would have been, I think, Vietnam. And then came back and played football. So he actually, he put everything on hold to go overseas, came back, and actually he had this interview once where it confirmed everybody's, you know, idea of him being the opposite of Joe Namath. And he said, you know, here's the thing. I'm married. I have kids. Yeah. And he embarrasses his kids to this day with this interview because he said, you know, I like sex just as much as Joe Namath. <laughs> only I do it with one girl. I mean, nice. that's, that's the only thing. So he was a stand-up guy, a family man, a military guy. Okay. I mean, he was the face of the franchise. And he went to four Super Bowls, won two of them. Wow. Um he was just the face of the franchise. He was Mr. Cowboy. Well, actually, Mr. Cowboy goes to Bob Lilly, who was the first cowboy we actually ever drafted. But he wow. was Captain America. I mean, that was his thing. <laughs> There's so many nicknames. Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, it's football. There are still nicknames. Uh, there are. Big Ben. Yep. I know he can go fuck himself. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go worst. Okay. I'll go worst. Yeah. Go worst. Your, like your worst nickname or worst like favorite player? My least, your favorite, least player. favorite player. Got I actually played, like, worst played for us player. for a while, too. No. Tara Lowens. Ooh, yeah, I've heard of that one for sure. Biggest celebratory player in NFL history, probably by far. Probably actually take it back. Yeah, either him or Chad Johnson, who actually ended oh. up playing together. Is um, that Ocho Cinco? No. Yeah. Chad, oh, okay. Yeah, Chad, I was like, am Chad, I right? Chad okay. Ocho Cinco. Okay, got it. Um, he and Terrell Owens were huge showbutters, and they were 
they were cancer. I mean, Ugh. Chad Ochocinco got better later in his career. Actually, once he started getting traded, mm-hmm. he, he toned it up a little bit. Or toned it down, I should say. But Terrell Owens was disrespectful. I mean, he, he was drafted by the 49ers and then went on to the Eagles and then the Cowboys. And then I think the Bengals after that. Jesus. And I No, the Bills after that. And then the, the Bengals where he played with Chad Ochocinco. And then I think he retired after that. Damn, he's been passed around more than a fucking Kardashian. (laughs) Jesus. What's funny is they they fuck athletes. I know, right? (laughs) So he probably was around there at some point. Uh, um, But he actually, he was drafted by the 49ers. And while he was with the 49ers, he was actually, he was uh, second string to Jerry Rice. And so you have to have that competitive spirit, that drive. Yeah. And it all came out, especially once Jerry was gone. Um, Wow. So he started like he had the bit where he put a permanent marker in his sock so that when he scored a touchdown, he pulled the permanent marker out of his sock, signed it and threw it into the stands. Um, He like danced with the cheerleaders at one point, like took their pom poms and stuff. No way. He did all kinds of shit. But the one that really pisses any Cowboys fan off is when he actually he had a game. Emmett Smith was still around, but Troy had retired and I believe Michael Irvin had retired. But Emmett Smith was still around, so we had a great on our team still, but we were seceding into mediocrity. We weren't that dominant of a team anymore, so Terrell came to Texas Stadium. And the whole thing about Texas Stadium is the hole in the roof. And the story goes that, you know, it was actually, they didn't finish the roof. It was going to be a retractable opening roof, Mm -hmm. and they just never finished it, or there was some sort of complication with it. Okay. So there was this open roof... um, it was actually, it was mostly covered, but then there was a hole in the roof and the, the legend went that God wanted to watch his favorite team. <laughs> so Terrell Owens took that to heart. Oh no. And when he came to Dallas to play us, he <laughs> said, well, if God's watching, then I got to put on a show. Oh my God. So he scores one touchdown. He goes to the end zone and you know, there's the Cowboys word art in the end zone. And then there's the helmet with the star. And he goes over to the helmet with a star on it, stands in the middle of the star and puts his arms out like, look at me, God. Like fucking LeBron style? Way more disrespectful. <sighs> Way, and this wasn't like before the game. This was during the yeah. game. And so he did that once. Emmett started going off on him a little bit. He started getting really, really competitive. Terrell Owens scores a second touchdown runs all the way to midfield at the 50-yard line, stands in the center of the star, and does the same thing and spikes the ball. Disrespectful as shit. Emmett I gotta Smith- look this up on YouTube. Oh, it's oh, it's horrible. Wow. Um, and then Emmett Smith, after that, goes in, rushes for a touchdown, and reclaims the star. He, goes, he runs to the 50-yard line, puts that ball down, and looks at the stands and is like, this is our house. Don't fuck with us. Terrell Owens scored a third time, runs to the 50-yard line, puts the ball down. George Teague... The safety at the time ran from the end zone, followed him, and as soon as he, as Terrell Owens put that ball down, he trucked the fuck out of him. Get off my star. And that's how that went. It's still talked about to this day. And actually, Terrell Owens was up. He's like second or third in every major receiving category. So wow. he was absolutely qualified for the Hall of Fame, but I'm really glad that they snuffed him mm. uh, at least one year. Yeah. Because his he character was, he was, was just cancer. Yeah. He never won a Super Bowl. It seemed like every team he went to uh, did worse because he was there. Oh, God. Uh, Cowboys were one of them for sure. Eagles were too. He was a, such a distraction with the Eagles. It was ridiculous. Wow. But um, yeah, so that's definitely a least favorite player of all time. Damn. And he played for us for a couple of years. Yeah. <sighs> Wow, that is yeah, that is, that is that is a shame. Um, I know we touched on it a little bit earlier. You obviously are an actor, but you're into sports, mm-hmm. so I kind of want to know, like, do you see any like similarities when it comes to performing for both of them? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I've actually I've been back into Fraser again. Oh. Um, I have a huge like my parents are psychologists, so them, <laughs> them being psychiatrists, it. I can relate to so much of the humor. Yeah. Um, and so actually at one point in that, they don't watch sports. They don't do it. They, they hate no. sports. Aww. Um, but they're really big into music and, and the theater and, and, you know, all that kind of <laughs> stuff. And at one point they're actually, they're at a game live and they have to have their, uh, house made their home care worker, I guess. Oh, translate to them in symphony terms, what's happening on the court. <laughs> it's, oh. it's one of the funnier things because it makes a lot of sense. Like, oh. like at one point they, they start, you know, I'm so sorry. I, I couldn't get any tickets down at the one yard line. You know, they're thinking that's front row. 
I could only get these lousy 50 yard tickets. Lousy. Yeah. Right. And so basically they think that's like sitting front row stage right of the symphony. And so they have to <laughs> translate it that way for it to make sense to them. Right. So there's always, there are always parallels between the arts and sports. There absolutely are. One of the funnier things that I think is, you know, happening is the stigma is kind of going away because sports players are learning, um, you know, like a lot of them do ballet now. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them, they're so into just getting the coordination down that they have to be able to learn to move their bodies in certain ways. And, you know, receivers can, you know, toe tap in the end zone. <laughs> and so that's all, you know, coordination and, and essentially dance. And they're even doing their own commercials, too. So they're getting yep. the acting experience. Man, Baker's good. Everyone says he's good, but I don't think he's that that good at acting. Well, okay, here's the thing. He's got a presence that yeah, some, I does. mean, like Aaron Rodgers in the State Farm commercials, they have to edit around him a little bit uh, to make okay. it believable. I got you. Baker, they can do it in one shot and it works. M- like what about Mahomes, he, too, with his little fucking he's okay. State Farm? You, really? Yeah, he's I, okay. He's just kind of smiling the whole time. So the, like, my eh. favorite one of Mahomes is when he's, you know, throwing cornhole. Oh, that's which nice is so one, yeah. Kansas. It is. I fucking love it. it. I haven't played I cornhole love cornhole. In so long, but oh, I love it so much. It's so good. Um, but even in that commercial, they have to do it in multiple takes, mm. just for even a couple lines to make it believable and make it flow well. I see what you mean. Yeah, huh. but Baker's good though. Well, especially the one where he's carrying the groceries in. Yeah, and he's got his and it drops. both of his arms. Yeah, yeah. I can't feel my fingers. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he commits to the bit, which is perfect. Yeah, and then also he has a little bit more of a presence about him, so it's believable. Right. You know, you he's can do it. You can do it man. in one. Oh, there's that too. Yeah. Um. I mean, that's that's all your department, not mine. But <laughs> but I will take your fucking word for it. Um, so, I mean, he's, he's got that thing about him. And so, yeah, there is a connection between all that. Dak does a ton of commercials, Dak Prescott, a ton of them. He's got Oikos and, and Sleep Number and all kinds of them. Oh, okay. Um. The, the Mannings. I know. The Mannings. Yeah. yeah. That one actually comes from Peyton's now in showbiz. Oh. He he has like his own show where he travels around. Really? Yeah. Um, Didn't so know a couple that. of those. Bill Romanowski is in all the Adam Sandler movies. He's okay. Isn't but... what Nick Saban from uh, what is it Alabama? He does mm-hmm. a bunch commercials now too. He does a bunch. So of even them. college people. Yep. Yeah. Um, I mean Jim Harbaugh. Oh. I mean, even in he his was transition, in one too? he's yeah. Oh, he was in one no. actually. It was really kind of funny about uh, Clorox bleach or something like oh, that. Jesus. And it was like he, he runs up and down the sidelines so often that his pants get dirty, and so he has to have a talk with <laughs> like the team uniform manager about yeah. bleaching his clothes it was kind of funny oh my gosh but that's gonna happen when i mean football is entertainment yeah that's essentially at that the end of the day point. it's what it is and yeah. that's why we have so many showboaters is like i'm entertaining mm-hmm, well mm-hmm. at the same time people like you more if you don't right. try and entertain right. like actually okay here's a good connection to another one of my favorite players mm-hmm. for sure not because of performing but because he had that attitude about it he said you know, every time he would score, he wouldn't celebrate. He would just give the ball back to the ref immediately, right. walk back to the huddle. I mean, that's what he did. Right. You're not wasting time. Yep. And that's Barry Sanders. Oh. Now, here's the thing. Barry Sanders is one of my favorites of all time. He grew up in Wichita, Kansas. That's dope. Yeah. And actually, this is one of the crazier stories that I have is uh, he knows my stepdad pretty, what? pretty personally. You have some great fucking stories. I have some. <laughs> and honestly, it's it's just because Kansas people don't have a whole lot to latch on to. Mm-hmm. So when we have something to latch on to, <laughs> it better be fucking good. Right, right. Um, and so actually, I was at, I was at my stepdad's uh, barbershop. I love Frank. Frank is my stepdad, and he's the coolest fucking cat on the planet. Um, and I, I'm at his shop at one point and he gets this call but he's cutting hair so he can't take the call and he goes hey Shane answer that for me so I pick up the phone and hello this is Frank's phone hey is Frank there yeah I said yeah he's busy but you know you can you call him back later he's cutting hair you know I gave that little bit of an explanation and he said hey okay well uh, just tell him Barry called I was like hey Frank uh Barry says call him back and he said Barry Sanders and I was like I'm sorry what <laughs> Who did I just the talk fuck? to? And it already hung up at that point. Like, yeah. uh, I was going, that did not just fucking happen. He goes, yeah, he grew up here. Did you know that? And I was like, no. What the <laughs> fuck? He's got a, a, a junior league field, like, in Wichita. He's He's got a huge presence there. Wow. He doesn't live there anymore. But, I mean, my stepdad grew up with him, and I actually got to talk to him on the phone without knowing it. That's so cool. Yeah. It was crazy. He actually wow. he came back a little while ago and recognized my stepbrother at, I think he worked at Whole Foods at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, like, said hi to him, recognized him, and everything. Thing. super That's nice crazy. guy yeah it was wow. insane but he always had that entertainment value down he was like, okay, I play a sport. That's the entertainment enough. Right. I don't need to show about I'm not, he, he wasn't a huge personality like a Juju or an Antonio Brown or a oh. Tara Lowens. He wasn't one of those. Jesus. He was just, 
I'm going to score. I'm going to do my job. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to get up, give the ball to the ref, and go back to the sideline. Wow. That's my job. Good man. There are absolutely parallels, but people, of course, feel differently about it. Just like yeah. um, the parallels between football specifically and theater from the background I have, I mean, there's always the competitive aspect in casting. Oh, well, that too. I didn't so even think about competitive. There's first string and second string where you have the starting lineup for a performing set. You know, you have the people who are cast and then you have understudies. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's always that. There are always, I mean, the awards are bullshit. So I don't think that's really an accurate comparison. You know, winning Tonys on Oscars and those right. kind of things. I mean, it's not really the same because most of that is voting. Mm-hmm. Most of that is subjective. It's not like, you know, there's a clear winner. Right, right. It's like how college football is ranked. It's never by record. It's by some committee that just votes like how good they think you are oh. versus, you know, who they think you should play in the playoffs and stuff. Did not know that about yeah. college. No, yeah. oh, okay. It's not a clear. That's why there are certain divisions. Like some colleges will make higher ranked playoffs and mm-hmm. some won't. Clearly you are more of an NFL fan than college fan. By far. <laughs> by far. To me, players are with their teams longer. You know, you can root for, you know, like a Jason Witten who was on the Cowboys mm. for oh, 10 plus years. I got to root for him for his entire career. He's on the Raiders now, which is weird. But, oh. um, you know, it was so much more of a, a commitment. Like Joe Burrow, actually, he was at a completely different college before he went to LSU and won the Heisman. So even in college, some people will not play all four years at their college. That's a good point. So, I mean, it's sometimes about the watchability. It's also because Kansas doesn't have much of a football focus. Mm, I got gotcha. you. If I lived somewhere else, if I lived in a different market, it might be different. Seriously. If yeah. I lived in, you know, Ohio or Columbus. if I lived in Texas, yeah. you know, if, if I lived in one of those places, it might be different. But yeah. we always had basketball. That was our thing. We always watched the March Madness oh, closely. Okay. We always had... You know, WSU and KU were always big presences in college basketball. Oh. So I'm much more of an NFL fan, for sure. It's so much more fun. It is. A lot I less think. games to, like, keep up with, and it, yeah. which makes it more hype, you know? Yeah, I agree. Do you play fantasy football, though? I don't. I'm too much of a home team fan. Me, I actually You're just to... like, screw it. I'm not even going to bother gambling well, with it. Well, the thing is, I know about the league. I know about what yeah. happens. I watch probably three to five games every single week. Mm-hmm. And if I'm already doing that, then I really don't need to play fantasy football because <laughs> fantasy was kind of formed so that people would start paying attention to the whole league. Okay. I, I mean, I think. I think that was kind of the league giving fans an answer to, like, fans who had bad teams. Mm-hmm. I don't want to watch my team anymore. Like, well, Browns fans for a good long while. <laughs> like, yeah. So they would actually, they would start making their own teams. And once you have a personal stake in it, right. you start paying attention to every game. It is true, though. It's like when you bet on a game, even if your team's not in it, if you're betting on that game, you're going to watch that game. Oh, yeah. You have a personal stake in that shit. Absolutely, So dude. it makes a huge difference. I mean, I never really wanted to do it like any other year. But like this first year, like now, I was like, eh, it's only 100 bucks. And yeah. Zach asked me to do it. And I was like, fine. Yeah. And so I made my team the West Hollywood Browns and Boobs. Nice. And it was beautiful. Nice. And very I, unwomanly. <laughs> I fucking love it. <laughs> Browns and boobs. And I obviously picked the boobs. The boobs. The boobs. <laughs> That's amazing. Too, way too late now. Yeah, I know. Next year. Maybe next year, yeah. There you go. But I mean, obviously I had like, <laughs> I I picked my people by how hot they were. So of course I I had to get Garoppolo cuz he oh, was course. the sexiest quarterback. Yeah. I I went with I mean, me- when you fuck porn stars. I know, like you obviously have your shit. Either you're paying together. for it, or you you've got some. Uh, I don't want to say traction. That sounds weird. <laughs> but you've got some some pull. Right, right, right. But yeah, he was a uh, that that was definitely my uh, number one QB pick. I ended up getting Tannehill later, who seems like a sweetheart. Um, <clears throat> he does seem like a sweetheart for sure. Yeah, he's a stand up dude. And I got Nick Chubb, obviously. Oh, of course. And people were even like trying so hard to get me to trade him, and I'm like, no. Yeah. I even asked Nick, the one who <laughs> edits these podcasts. Yeah. I was like, Nick. <laughs> Um, I'll give you Chubb if you edit one of my podcasts for free. <laughs> and he never did it. I think, uh, it was, I think it was too late in the season. So. Well, it still worked out. Yeah, so. yeah, it's, it's still I've heard out, from but. so many people who were playing you in fantasy that were so fucking pissed off. About Chubb or about... No, about your team winning. Oh, my... Oh, your, oh my team. Yeah, you would beat them uh, off yeah. of, like, shit that was making absolutely no sense. I know! Because you were picking who was cutest. It's... <laughs> so uh, true though uh, it's fucking true people got pissed but i, I still I ended up pissed. i still ended up pretty shitty so Did you? I mean, they can oh, okay yeah i'm pretty sure brady's the one that won so must be nice that to walk sense, home though. with that fucking amount of money but yeah whatever it's fun though yeah but I, just, I can't bring myself to do it is the thing 
to do fantasy. I'm such a Cowboys fan that at, at one point, I know like our buddy Matt is a huge Bears fan. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times he'll be picking players who end up having to play the Bears. So in a right. way, he has a part of him that is rooting against his Bears. Mm-hmm. I can't do that. I can't bring myself to do it at all. I really, I just, I can't justify it in my own head i get it and i could do it i might do it next year but yeah but so far you probably that's why could I kick haven't. ass to be honest well I mean, you know your shit so true but it goes way further than that yeah like sometimes you just have to be lucky that is i was just gonna say yeah, yeah that is that is true. sometimes it's better to be lucky than good i feel like the browns were definitely a good mix this year for both yeah i would say gotcha. lucky and good but I do kind of want to do some Super Bowl predictions with you. Of course. Um, I have it ready to go. You do? I do. Because I know, I obviously, for us. we just had some more games yesterday. So yep. we have some different outcomes we than filled, what we thought. We filled these out before. You and I talked about this. Mm-hmm. So we have our ones down. We have them locked in just for these last two games. Yeah. But then we have two more today that are coming up. So I let's know. let's do the rest of them. Okay, let's do it. Yeah? Let's do it. Okay, cool. So the ones that happened yesterday were, what happened? Rams Packers happened first. Yep. Uh. I called the Packers to win. You called the Rams. <laughs> so, I was like, I'm a big LA fan, though. Rams. Yeah, uh, and I can't be mad at that, but that's emotional. It is and super that's a, emotional. That's another thing about fantasy. Yeah. I try, I try to stay objective. I try to stay logical as, as much as I can, at least. Yeah. You know, when it comes to the boys, I'm a fucking psycho. But yeah, <laughs> I'm a fucking psycho. I believe. I'm it. quiet when I watch games. I'm like, you know, oh, this might no. happen. But then when the Cowboys come on, I'm screaming the fuck out of oh, I'm screaming everyone crazy. around me. Oh yeah. Like it just, oh, it's rough. Yeah. But I called the Packers yesterday. Yeah. And, and the Packers won. Yeah. And then the Ravens played the Bills. Both of us called the Ravens to win, and they choked. They choked. They choked hard. Lamar goal. was pissed. With that pick six at his own end zone. Sorry, oh. not his own end zone, but he was He was so close to getting, yeah, he was so close to a touchdown. Choked. Oh, yeah, big time. And now he's going to keep that playoff stigma about him. Yeah. He was like, he can't win the big one. And then he left the fucking game to go poop again, probably. No, he, he, he was injured. <laughs> was he injured? Yeah. No. Well, he said he had cramps last time, and he 100% had to poop, so. <laughs> <laughs> People want to say he did he, he did. Totally had he to had shit. to take a shit. Look at the way he's waddling to the Bro. to the locker room. He's like turtling. He's like, Gotta make it. Gotta make it. He's prairie dogging it. Yes. That's a can- that's definitely yes. a Kansas thing. That's a Plains thing. Oh my god. So you and I both called the Ravens to win, and they didn't. So yeah. you were wrong on both of your calls. Yeah. Well, story of my life. So today, in a little bit, the Browns are going to play the Chiefs. Uh huh. And you call. I'm calling the fucking Browns, baby. Here we go. There's that emotional call pick again. Call. I I gotta. I mean, not that they have a bad chance. You want to know why? They have a strong why. chance to win. They absolutely do because. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, I'm kind of taking it off of other people, too, because I sure. haven't watched every fucking Chiefs game this year. But Your like, own opinions of other people's opinions. Exactly. <laughs> so, and what I have seen, yep. um, I mean, obviously, Mahomes is amazing, but uh-huh. he, he, their run game is, their run game defense is like, they are not going to be able to stop us when it comes to Chubb and Hunt. So, yeah. we but shall the thing see. Is, some coaching sometimes can supersede that. And Andy Reid okay. is an incredible coach. Sometimes oh, yeah. his game plan may just pull it out. Fuck. But the thing is, they've been playing so not poorly is the thing because they've been winning but they have seemed to play down to their opponent's skill level sometimes like they almost they almost lost to atlanta falcons and they're awful or and they're awful oh they're notorious for giving up games anyway there you go Um, we have a fucking chance there's a big chance huge chance. so while i say it's an emotional pick i mean it's not like that's a terrible pick right Right. um but i'm i am gonna take the chiefs Uh, not not because it's home team but because i think the game planning plus mahomes Baker has some maturity issues. Like mm. he's got a thing where sometimes he will take risks he doesn't need to. Mm-hmm. And I don't need to tell you this, you know. Yeah. And so and I get sacked a lot in the pocket. Yep. But I mean, that's also O line defense. That. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I'm gonna use this one from now on. Let's just do that. <laughs> um, actually, I perfected that a little bit. You, oh you add Lord. the little burp in there that we've been doing this whole time, mm-hmm. but you add it with the gag effect. Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus. It just, it's not, yeah. Anyway, so Christ. I'm gonna take the Chiefs. Okay. Who's the other game that plays today? Uh, the other one is Bucks at Saints. Oh, that'll be a good one. That's going to be a really good Drew one. Drew Brees and Tom Brady. Huh? Uh-huh. Okay. So who are you calling for that one? Tom Brady. Yeah? Oh, yeah. You sound so Dr- confident. Drew Brees deserves it because he's a cutie. Yeah. But Tom, it's it's Tampa Bay. It's 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 Tom, man. But yep. I don't know. but I get that. I mean, what's do you know what their record is this year? So I far? don't have the record. I know. I don't. I don't up. either. <clears throat> is I Drew Brees for the number two seed? Is Drew Brees the one that like lost his mom? Yes. Oh, that's so but he sad. also went through controversy this year oh. because he he said you know during all the the stuff that was happening this year that um, he was not going to support kneeling because he has military family and, oh, and you know he, interesting. He was super 
the thing it came down to, he was being insensitive about it. He was so mm. gung-ho about, no, I will absolutely not kneel, and I don't support anyone who kneels. Wow. He wasn't sensitive to the situation. No yeah. matter what his personal feelings are, you're also the face of a franchise, and you have a lot of teammates who are big into the cause. So exactly. he, he kind of wasn't taking that into account. He apologized later. Oh, uh, okay. But still, but, yeah. 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 So, but, oh, Bucks at Saints. Oh, this is closer than I thought. Bucks were 11-5. and five. Saints were 12-4. and four. So it was only wow. one, one game difference. Wow. Yeah, so that might be better than we think. Fuck. Um, I'm going to take the Saints, though. Okay. Um, I just think they're depth. You and I are opposites. This is great. Uh, for most of this so far. And um, also, like, it's kind of cool that I didn't even realize, like, this is our fucking hometowns battling today. Like, I didn't even... Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. I'm not... I, I, it's, it's Missouri. Ish. Yeah, you're Kansas right. City is Missouri. True, true. See, Whatever. Not, Fuck not it. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. Um, but the second string for the Saints is so, so solid mm. that I can't... I can't take over that. Like Bucks okay. are, are so top heavy on their first string that their second string is still uh, as, like me. nice. As soon as like a Mike Evans comes out, you okay. know, then it, it falls down to an Antonio Brown who is yeah. not consistent. Um, but then they also have Chris Godwin who is solid. He, he I mean, he really is. Is Antonio Brown second string? Technically, yeah. Good. That's where he should fucking be. He should be I third fucking string. Agree. I or fucking agree. Or not even in the whatever. I can't believe he found a job. I can't either. I really can't believe that he found man a job. is something else, Ugh. man. Ugh. I mean, the Browns are kind of like that too. We're pretty top heavy, but yep. also like, I mean, I was looking at like Steelers and they've got Mason who's mm-hmm. like, you know, number two quarterback and yeah. you know, he's, he's decent. So yeah, I guess it, it all depends. So here's where our brackets get really interesting because we both have at least one team that lost. True. So here's where our brackets get screwed up for you. Um, what you have to call for the AFC championship would be Browns at Ravens mm. and the Ravens lost. Right. So you kind of better hope that the Browns win today, so you, at least you get that win out of it, and they can move on. Could play the what Bills then? Uh, I yeah. Think, okay. Yep. Ooh. That would be next week. Dude, they kicked ass yesterday. Yeah, that yeah. was crazy. Josh Allen's been playing like an MVP, but Aaron Rodgers is still going to probably take it. Aaron was Aaron was fucking. He made me go crazy. I was like, yeah. wow, this dude is good. No wonder why he's going to probably get MVP. Yeah. Damn. Yep. So that screws up your thing a little bit. It does but a little also, bit. It screws up mine too because then. In that case, I would have Ravens at Chiefs. Okay. But I still picked the Chiefs to win that, and you also still picked the Browns to win that. Yeah. So that kind of improves our our uh, chances of moving on to the Super Bowl with those teams. Mm. Uh, but then on the other side of that, then that means I would have Saints at Packers, and you would have Bucks at, well, I guess the Rams lost. Damn. You screwed up your racket. <laughs> oh, you really screwed it up. Oh. Um, but then at that point... Who'd you have winning in the NFC? Rams at Buccaneers? Yeah. Buccaneers. Okay. Let's go for that. So there's still a chance of them moving on too. Yeah. So that, that improves your, your prediction quality, I guess. I want Browns versus Bucks. That would be a good one. Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Take the Cleveland Browns to the Super Bowl into the ba- toilet. Baker and Brady would be a really good Super Ooh, Bowl. Ooh, that would be It would be, be a really, really watchable. That would for sure. That would honestly, that would put to rest all the Brady versus Belichick debate oh, probably mm. so it probably changed the narrative that poor man way. is that poor son of a bitch is mm. nothing without brady poor dude i, I, I he's can't, struggling i can't decide, I can't decide. Off. but the thing is he didn't have a good quarterback and so he really he wasn't able to run the offense he wanted to cam I mean, newton wasn't yeah. that good no mm, i didn't no, pay no, attention no. he uh, he they essentially they changed the entire offense to fit cam's scheme mm. and it's not what belichick is used to it's not at all. Oh. And, and Josh Daniels is the, the offensive coordinator. He had to change everything up as well. Ooh. They're a passing team. That's tough. And they had to, to run it with Cam most of the year. And it's just not not right. Right. So that's my doorbell ringing. The game's oh, going to start shit. here in a little bit. Yeah, it is. Um, it I'm going to finish this up real fast. I have everybody texting me, so it's all good. Yeah. Um, I, I have it actually. The Chiefs beating the Ravens, which I still think they can beat the Bills, honestly. So I'm going to have them going to the Super Bowl. Okay. Um, personally... And then the Packers are just too good. I think they would outlast the Saints. Yeah. Um, so I, I actually I have a Chiefs Packers Super Bowl with the Chiefs taking it thirty four to thirty one. That's my final prediction. That is insane. We're literally the complete opposite. That's yeah. nuts. Oh, you even got the score. Yeah. Um, I think I would say yeah, thirty eight twenty seven okay. for Browns. Okay. Okay. Big margin. That's an eleven that is point a pretty difference. Big, that is a pretty big difference. All right. Yeah. All right. There's some enough. failed two point conversions in there somewhere. Oh, and like there you, you go. know. Yeah. Stack <laughs> stack the score you know. a little bit. Yeah. I feel you. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, mine's interesting a little bit because it's also, it would be a replay of Super Bowl One. Oh, interesting. Yeah. But I have the Chiefs winning it. Okay. I can't bring myself to have the Packers win in, yeah. my, in my prediction. I yeah. just, I, as a Cowboys fan, ugh, 
I can't. I can't do it. That would suck. Yep. Damn. So those are our predictions. Those are our predictions. Do our sign off. Let's finish this shit. Yes. Up. So we got to watch the Browns, guys. But I do want to thank you, babe, for coming on and talking sports because absolutely, I, I obviously could do this for fucking hours, which we have. So <laughs> yeah. Yes, we have. And you learned stuff. I learned a lot. You learned a bunch. Which You're is also... related to Babe Ruth. Shut the fuck up. Yes. Like that's like my, first, my number one that I'm like so excited about. <laughs> But, but it's it's a, it's a cool story to tell. Yeah. Oh yeah. I have a few sure. of them. Yeah. yeah. Just just a few. Just but, slightly. But had a but. fucking lovely time. Yeah. I'm it was glad. Awesome. Yay. Please let's do it again. Let's Absolutely. do an off season edition after yes. everything finishes up, and we'll we'll see yeah. how the league changes going into 2021. Yeah. We'll talk more about like COVID stuff and how we think well how it did go for this next season. Maybe. I imagine we'll have to. Yeah. We'll do that, babe. Fuck yeah. All right, guys. Make sure you follow along with Chandler's adventures at Chandler Moore Official on Instagram. <laughs> Yes! And of course, <laughs> keep up with me, Jen Danzak, at Jen Danzak on all social media platforms. And be sure to follow at Unwomanly Podcast on Instagram. I'm getting better at updating on that page, guys. So it's uh, worth a follow. But I do have merch. You guys should go on my website, jendanzak.com, and go to the merch tab. And let's rock that shit together. I will see you guys next time here on Unwomanly. <laughs>